Maar nou gesels ons met uh, Setelo of Setelo Bata. Uh, Mabata en mm. Bridget Pitt. Setelo kan, kan, hier kan help ons met uh, Setelo. 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 So good morning Setelo en Bridget. Good morning. Uh, I just want to. I just want to first ask where you, where are you sitting? Where are you at the moment? Uh, we're sitting in my dining room <laughs> at the moment. That's my piano in the background. Oh, fantastic! Oh, in what town? In Cape Town. In Cape Town. Oh. Do you know? You know, there's someone behind you. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I haven't I haven't read the whole book, uh, parts of it. It is a beautiful book. I really want to motivate people to read it. So, Sitrelo, let's start with you. Just a little bit of your background, difficult upbringing, um, and just how did you end up in nature doing what you do? Just a little bit of background about your your upbringing. Well, I I was born in in, in Wazulu Natal, near the town called Tekabisa. Uh, and I'm a neighbor of the game reserve called Imfolo Zichufue Park. And uh, my father was working in the park, so I used to visit him. Uh, when I finished the school, then when I finished my metric in 1998, I worked in Imfolo Game Reserve as a volunteer for three years. So doing patrolling and, and black rhino monitoring, lion collapse, clearing alien blast control, and also working in environmental education. You know, so that's that's all. That's how it all ignited. That's that's how the spike became mm. a fire. Wow. And also, I mean, you your your name. Uh, tell us about your name. And you're also from the Zulu tribe, uh, the Mabata clan. You know, it just it's such so rich of tradition and yeah. and culture. Uh, I just discovered that my totem animal is a buffalo. Uh, I'm coming from the Zulu tribe, Mbata. My surname is Mbata, which means to, to dress on. But uh, under the, uh, the, the, the generation of uh, Usonchigaz, uh, of which it was our leader, the Zulu, I mean, the Mbata leaders, was Usonchigaz, and he was a Sangoma. And he used to uh, dress a, a big uh, a, a buffalo skin on his shoulders as a way of communicating with the buffaloes. And thereafter, the, his sons, Mbata and Shandu, they all follow suit, and then they ended up uh, uh, wearing uh, the whole uh, cow skin to follow their father. So we've been recognized as the people of Amambata, which means the son, Sikrelo, a son of Umbata, because mm. Mbata is to dress something. So that is how. But then the buffalo uh, is, my, is my totem uh, animal. Mm. Wow. And then Bridget Pitt, are you from the Brad Pitt clan? Just tell us a little bit about yourself as well and how did you two meet and just start working together and, and producing the, this most beautiful written book. Um, it, you, you, I mean, from even if, any paragraph, all the paragraphs, you, you, you've been drawn mm. in. I can see it, I can smell stuff, yeah. I can feel it. Um, we're going to get into the book a bit later. Just a little bit of background about yourself. Um, well, I grew up in Johannesburg. I've, I've always been very passionate about nature. Um, I'm, I'm an author sort of by profession, and I've written some novels. And I, I went on a trail with Sikolo in uh, 2010, I think the first time. And thereafter, we got to know each other. Um, I, was, I was researching a book at that time. I was wanting to write a book around rhinos, and um, he was incredibly helpful. So I went on another trail with him, and then uh, I went, visited him over the years and, and did more trails, and I gradually got more and more interested in his own story. Um, so yeah. when lockdown came and he couldn't work uh, with his, his guiding business, I said, let's take this opportunity and, and write this book. Yeah. Bridget, but it's so amazing. Um, I read a piece, one of the parts that you sent through, and as your nay said, you're actually drawn into that whole uh, scenario. I can actually feel it, uh, the way you've written it. Um, you're drawn into the whole, the whole atmosphere of you being there in nature, and it's so precious to experience that. And, and we can actually experience the, the peace that you felt whilst being in nature, um, tell us more about the trial, the trial that you've been on with the uh, Citrello. 
Uh, well, these are really amazing trails that, that he conducts. Um, so it's a wilderness trail where you go into the Mpholozi wilderness for uh, about six days, five nights or so. Mm. And you just walk, um, you know, you don't have campsites, you don't have a daily schedule, you don't take your cell, cell phone, phone. <laughs> you don't have watches, you don't, have, you know, you only can tell the time by the sun and the stars. Mm. And mm. it's just the most amazing experience because you are so drawn in and so immersed. And a lot of that is to do with the way Sikhelo conducts it and how he brings you into the space. And I think that's that's what really touched me about why I felt that his story and particularly his approach to interacting yeah. with nature was so important for the world now. Mm. I want to talk about your experience as a person writing a book like this and in, even going back to, uh, for me, one of the saddest stories um, I've read, you know, Zanelli's story, um, your best friend, someone you looked up to, um, it was just killed in front of you, uh, you were children by a crocodile. But then through the book, how you how you say that you've learned lessons from the crocodile, you had to forgive the crocodile, and and then you learn lessons from the buffalo, but you also learn lessons from a beetle. Um, and but what how is uh, your growth um, reflecting on your life? A book like this was it an amazing journey? It uh, it felt like I was locked in that room, that full of painting of my life, and uh, and this painting. Uh, reflect the emotions and the depression that I went through as a person, you know. Uh, so, so, uh, but then on the other hand, it helped me to to escape from that by writing because writing was the way of releasing these emotions. And and we no longer visit these emotions in our life. We we people we seems to shy away from something that is troubling us. And the book was kind of like a, a friendly reminder for me to invite me, stay with my emotions and look what I can learn from the emotions mm. and mm. make relationship, relationship with the emotions and then slowly drift away. Because if you seem to avoid it, it comes and, and it's haunting you for a long time. Keep on coming and nagging you, keep on coming and nagging you. It's better when you just make a relationship with it and then find a way forward, moving forward, you know. Mm. So... The book was like that for me. Well, I think that's what's standing out, Bridget, especially um, where you say that I, I think Sikelo helped you to not only see the major stuff, the the big five, but also the small little things in Asia that we overlook so many times. Yeah, that's that's really true. It's, it's, it's actually really interesting looking at my photographs from these trails because, of course, the, you know, there are some rhinos and elephants and so on, but a lot of the photographs are of spiders and <laughs> beetles. <laughs> and, and, you know, tiny little creatures, and in a way, yeah. they have the same absorption for me. I mean, it's different; they don't have the majesty, but they, you know, they're just remarkable when you mm. focus in on. Did mm. you did you learn to appreciate the spiders? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. But I, I do appreciate spiders anyway. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so, being so close to nature, difficult question, last question for both of you. Um, if you look at our wildlife, especially Africa and South Africa, are we in trouble or are, on, are we on the right path to preserve the animals, preserve nature? Mm. Stella? I, I think we we, we we slowly moving towards the edge. No? We are on the edge. Uh, mm. I think the, the biggest problem with this is uh, black communities surrounding the park have been left aside and they are not a part of preserving it. You cannot preserve something that you cannot, that you, you that you never laid your eyes on. So you find that the black people within the, I mean, around the park, they never seen a rhino, you know, but a, a person from England have been here for a long time seeing these animals and the locals, they never just laid their eyes on they, on their own heritage. You can't prevent something that you that you never lay your eyes because it doesn't you feel like it doesn't belong to you. Mm. So mm. if we can come together as conservationists with the locals, we can preserve this. We can preserve rhino poaching. We can fight with climate change because mostly most of the time we feel like the the black communities I feel like still 
more pushed aside. And it's, it's us as conservationists. It's my role mm. as a conservationist, as a guide, to just bring them on board and saying, this is the problem that we're facing. You've got the climate change, rhino poachings, lions are, are, are dismating. All these things, the wilderness is shrinking, mines is taking over our heritage. What can we do as, as, as the people? So I think we must find a, 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 a remedy for that. Mm. And then we can all move forward. Mm. Oh. Bridget, uh, sorry, we ran out of time uh, for, for your answer on that one, but we will motivate the people to get this book. It is beautifully written, like I said. Thank you for your time, and hopefully there's another one coming. So uh, enjoy your weekend. Thank you, sir. It's coming. The book is coming. The another one is coming. Oh, there's another one coming. So Moxie can create Black Lion and Life in the Wilderness by a my book. In weer in Swart, you to besef, as you know, denk in Pretoria, you was lewis and olifant and alles, and now kost it jou soveel geld om Net sê sy groot vijf te sien. Jy weet, in die moeilikheid. Blijf skakel vir jou 7 uur nieuws en weer. Kom ons gaan groot.